let's talk about <laughs> a really, really, I think, despicable piece of news um, that has just come out today. And it's something that we knew about. Matt and I talked about this when it was announced. You know, one of the fundamental failures of, of this Kamala Harris campaign has not been, been to put any level of daylight between her and Biden. Like not even just talking about taking a humane position on this issue, really just driving home the fact that nothing fundamentally will change. And there was this really cynical attempt by the Biden administration uh, on the issue of the genocide in Gaza uh, to try to save face. And that is as the international community, as the United Nations, and more and more people are saying there is a mass starvation event happening, particularly in North Gaza. The United States said, you know what, maybe we might consider under certain circumstances following American law. And America, um, by the way, it is against the law for the United States uh, to provide military assistance uh, to uh, uh, to countries that are blocking humanitarian aid. Right? Something that we've said we won't do it. Well, of course, you know there's an exception for everything, and Israel seems to be an exception uh, for that. Uh, you had Blinken 30 days ago put out an ultimatum uh, to Israel, saying you have to let these food trucks into northern Gaza. Now, as we noted then. Um, you know, it's a pretty cynical, nasty thing in the first place to say, hey, it looks like they're not allowing food into this community. Um, you have a month to get food into this community, um, knowing full well what that means for the people living um, in northern Gaza. You have a month that is right after the election to stop starving people. I mean, transparently evil. And, and even more evil, uh, should be a surprise to no one, though. Uh, despite 30-day Gaza aid ultimatum, the United States says support for Israel will proceed. The United States law prohibits military assistance to allies blocking humanitarian aid, but Washington says no assessment on Israel. The United States was unambiguous in a message to Israel last month, take specific steps within 30 days uh, or face consequences. The deadline has now passed, and the United Nations is warning that famine is imminent in parts of northern Gaza, but there will be no consequences for Israel, the administration of outgoing President Joe Biden said on Tuesday. And let's just look um, for a second. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to pull this off of um, here's one. what the White House is saying about this, because um, it's really, really disgusting here. The lucky, the one thing is like we only have a couple more months to hear these people lie uh, to the world and the American public. Uh, cold comfort here when you look at what we're talking about. And then spokesperson Alex Jones. Yeah. Today there are multiple international aid agencies that say that Israel has failed to address the concerns and that the situation is even more dire than a month ago. Does the administration think that Israel has taken enough steps, or do you agree with these aid organizations and their assessment? So a couple of things. Let me just take a look back at the last 30 days. Uh, Israel has taken steps to address the measures laid out uh, in, the, in that letter from the two secretaries, Secretaries Blinken and, and also Austin. And we are in a discussion with the Israelis about both Great. the important steps Israel has taken as a result of the United States intervention, blah, blah. as well as... It's, it's, it, this, this is what is called um, in, in the business a lie. Um, no, no. I mean, this is bullshit, uh, what, what's going on here. The aid trucks um, are sitting outside. They have not allowed the food into Gaza. Um, by any meaningful metric... Uh, they are continuing uh, th this blockade and this mass starvation starvation campaign against the people in Gaza. And I want that to be, I want this to be clear for a few reasons. One, to realize how the American government lies to the people like this. Right? This is even not just like oh, this is breaking moral law or international law, whatever those kind of squishy things. No, no, this is American law, and they are refusing to play ball. Now, of course, we're going to see a Trump administration that is going to do the exact same thing. But when you try to hold this over somebody's head. It call it falls flat because as you're seeing right now, it is the Biden administration that is willingly participating in the starvation of Palestinian people. And just really to like put some, you know, some some focus on this. I wanted to share this. Um, Jeremy Scahill uh, shared it. This is from Drop Site, which y'all should be following and supporting. Uh, one of their correspondents who is in Gaza. This is their on the ground report of what their experience is right now. As infested flour becomes a staple, State Department still assessing Israel's aid restriction to Gaza. This is the most difficult period I have endured since Israel's genocidal war on Gaza began last year. Everyone is so hungry. 
Over the past week, my family and I have resorted to eating canned pet food mixed with poor quality rice that feels like chewing plastic. We live in Deir al-Bala, um, and like everywhere else in Gaza, there is nothing to buy in the markets. We typically eat one meal a day, usually some canned food along with olive oil and za'atar. To bake bread, we have to use bug-infested flour. Some days when we are unable to find anything else, we are forced to pay absurd prices for vegetables that are rotten. I have severe stomach pains. I would rather fast than eat this. I dream of food every day. I imagine our fridge full of meat, lettuce, milk, and cheese. I sometimes talk to myself at night when I'm hungry and have nothing to eat. That's what the on the ground reality is. And that's what these liars in the Joe Biden and Kamala Harris administration are doing right now um, is coming out and continuing to misinform the American public about what the on the ground situation is and to say, we're having conversations with Israel where we're praising them for all the great work that they're doing. It's disgusting. I mean, they're intentionally starving people. Um, yeah. And um, look, and, and it's just like, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot... The, a lot of our focus is on like the election and stuff. Um, but this is a fundamental reality that people knew in this country about what the Kamala Harris uh, administration has been with, uh, with Biden and what it would represent in the future. Right. And the fact of the matter is, is that the genocide is happening under their watch. Right. So all of this kind of glee from liberals who are saying, well, all these Palestinians and Arabs are going to learn their lesson for not supporting Kamala what are they getting right now for this? What have they gotten? They have gotten the most horrific, horrific chapter um, in, in, in recent memory in Gaza. It's also not true. There's no way history is going to look back at, say, the voters who said, I voted for AOC yeah. in the Bronx, but I didn't vote for Kamala Harris because we wanted to punish, which is a large percentage of people. History is not going to look back at those people with the raised eyebrow. It is going to be looking at the people who were like, obviously were the better guys while conducting a genocide. And it turned out it doesn't fucking work. Their, their fucking legacy is, is so unbelievable. Um, the, the, the genocide, the mass slaughter of children, the images of, you know, mothers holding their dead kids and crying and saying, I wasn't able to feed my child breakfast, you know, just like this stuff that tears at your heart. And on top of that, four years where they basically said to Trump, Hey, why don't you take four years Take a moment, relax, spend some time in Mar-a-Lago, get your boys together, come up with a plan so you guys, so you can come and take the keys back in and, and complete your movement. I mean, this is the legacy of the Biden uh, Kamala administration right here. Yeah. I mean, it's nice of you to call it the Kamala administration now. I think now that she's lost the- uh, We don't have to do that anymore. The presidency, no one's going to remember her. Like, it's yeah. like Dukakis? What was his deal? <laughs>